So we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer here, guys. And we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we just lift up our your children tonight. Marcy and Kaylin, Lord, battling illegal issues, legal mountains. Sherry, medical issues, oh Lord. Don Kennedy, battling health issues. Mike, Lord. Hazenbaugh, battling mountains we can't see, oh God. <clears throat> Nani Suzu, battling medical issues. On top of everything else, oh Lord. We lift up Hazenbaugh, who has the demon around her, convincing her that she's alone and abandoned when she has millions around her that she doesn't even realize. Send your presence to her, oh God. Lord, an unspoken request right now for health issues and other issues in their life, Lord. You know Isaac's needs. Oh Lord, we lift up Lisa and Gina tonight, oh God, that the battles of loneliness from the loss of a loved one, Tim's family from a loss of a loved one, we know that he's entered its heavenly rest. Lord, give them comfort. Send your angels down to them. Tabitha and Kimothy, Lord, we lift up Kimmy with her battling spirit, uh, physical blindness. Give her the strength spiritually to carry through. Lord, we lift up Antonio, Stephen, Jasmine, Ashley, and Nicole tonight, that they truly come to you, O oh God, and they truly seek salvation. Lord, give little angel steadfastness and that her desire, a desire to seek you, O oh God, and to start learning your word, O oh God. Uh, Lord, we call these addictions out, that you free the children, your children from those addictions and bondages and give them strength to come out of it and come to you, O oh God. Lord, we come to you again to lift up Connie, who has gotten better. Lord, we thank you for that. We ask that you continue to keep a hedge of protection around her. And Shiloh, oh Lord, battling that legal issues, Lord, Give her peace that passes all understanding that your hand will be on them. in on this matter, O oh Lord. Let you let not the enemy steal her joy. Lord, we lift up Matthew and Amanda right now, O oh Lord. And we lift up Linda and Alan, O oh God. They are battling their mountains, Lord. Give them strength to come through them. And Lord, as we lift up this Bible study tonight, Lord, let us not read it privately, but to understand your word fully from your interpretation and your words, oh God. Nothing that we could add or take away. Lord, we just ask you to anoint the hearers and the speakers tonight. And Lord, we lift up Benita tonight. Even though she couldn't make it, we lift her up that you bless her and you give her peace that passes all understanding. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, Amen. Amen. Sitting here with tears in my eyes, guys. Sorry. Uh, but when I pray, I start crying. I don't know why. Hmm. Holy Spirit. I just, the tears just start to come. It's like all I see is little water spots in my eyes. Hmm. That's good. I, I love, I, and I love to tell people about it. But I want you guys, anytime you are facing any kind of persecution, I want you to remember Isaiah 54, verse 15 through, I believe it's 17. Yeah, 54, 15 through 17. Because it is an assured promise from God that no weapon, and this is why I like to remind you guys of this. It says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the righteousness of me, saith the Lord. So anytime you feel like you're being persecuted and that there's no reprieve in sight, I want you to remind yourselves of that verse, okay? Okay. This this is what I do a lot of times when old wounds come up, Isaac, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Marcy. 
I have to come to this scripture because if I don't, I, I start dwelling on it and I get angry. And I get so angry that I become bitter because of the enemy's attack. Really? And this scripture reminds me to stay humble in God and to accept his promise and his word. Okay. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you guys, is the Old Testament just as relevant today as it was when it was written? Absolutely. Yes. Amen. That's what I want to remind people of. That any life situation can be referred to the Bible, whether it be Old or New Testament. They do connect. Like Proverbs 11 and Matthew 5. People don't realize the Beatitudes are written in Proverbs <laughs> you can't tell me it ain't the hand of God that the two match but we're going to go back to Proverbs 12 Proverbs 12 is important but we're also going to probably take a break just so we can get our minds focused again here after we do Proverbs 12 we'll go to a different uh, study subject and then we'll come back to Proverbs that way we're not getting overwhelmed and getting the drowsy eyes. Because Proverbs is very heavy with moral virtues and their contrary vices. <clears throat> but I want to go ahead and start here in Proverbs 12, verse 1. Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. <clears throat> I would says it all right there. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of <laughs> wicked device will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. And how many of you guys remember that song, I Shall Not Be Moved? Um, who's it by? It's actually an old hymn. It says, I shall not be moved. <laughs> it's talking about like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you notice that that scripture ties right here to Proverbs 12.3? Uh, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Yeah. The more we plant ourselves in the word <clears throat> of God, and the more we root ourselves in the word of God, do you think we're going to be easily swayed by a false teaching? Oh, no. That's why a lot of people don't realize that even hymns bring you back to a scripture. Now, I love this next one. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. We know about the idolatrous woman, the adulterous woman, those that are luring. You know how even Eve was uh, the curse to Adam, right? Because she disobeyed God. Not all women are bad. This is not what it's saying because it's a, let's, let's, I want to make sure that's clear, guys. I know that. But a woman that is honoring God is a, is a crown to her husband because people see it and go, wow, him and her. Look at how well she respects her husband, how well she honors God through her husband. And they give credit to that. And that, that's a beacon of light. And I encourage women to be virtuous, to live by the word of God. Because you are an honor, if, even if you're single or widowed. You are still honoring God as long as you're seeking his will. Because then if a man comes to you, you young ladies... He's going to have a prize. And that prize is given to him by God. I like the next one here. The thoughts of the righteous are right. But the counsels of the wicked are deceit. We talked about this one too a little bit last Wednesday. 
that if we if we are come as a congregation together and we come to study together and we get stronger, you notice we're an immovable force. But if we sit idle and we start seeking other people's opinions instead of the work, God's opinions, we kind of fall short and we start leading ourselves away from God. That's what he's wanting us up here. We, we've heard this in the New Testament where Jesus says the asps, the tongue of the asp is on their lips. The word of the wicked, the words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood. But if the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. How many people have gotten conned into doing something they really didn't want to and then they suffered for it later? How many of you guys have wound up with that? I know I have. Yeah. People uh -huh. made it sound good and then they freaking nail you for it. When Once you realize, hey, I got to step away from this and you have some people that'll sit there and we call them gap standers. And that's the people that go, hey, 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 brother, come here. Or hey, hey, sister. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go with that. Come this way. Let me show you why. That's our job as Christians. To snatch them away from a dangerous pit. But I like the next one. This goes for you, Sister uh, Marcy, with the legal battles. And Isaac, remind your other grandma to look here at Proverbs 12.7. The wicked are overthrown. <laughs> the wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. When we are facing spiritual battles we can't fathom any way out of, God's there working with you and he's reminding you that as long as you seek my will and you keep yourself out of the world, I will deliver you. Right here, the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. When you face, don't think about what you're going to say in court. Allow God to lead you to speak the truth. Because God will deliver you from the synagogues of the wicked and the courts of the, of, of the world. And that's why a lot of people don't catch that. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. How many of us have went to a job and there's always that one person that tries to sabotage, block, hinder your path and to make your life a living hockey stick? <clears throat> We've all been through that, haven't we? Yep. Yeah. This is exactly what he's talking about. But he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. That's that person that all they care about is creating misery. We've all, like I said, we've all had those kind of people in our life. They don't like it that you're better or that you know how to do certain things. And it's the envious heart. The envious heart is what destroys a lot of people. And that's what he's talking about. And I like verse 9. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. It's better to be right and starving than to be wealthy and a fool. <laughs> We've heard that one, haven't we? Yeah. That one pretty much explains itself. <laughs> A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. We see those kind of people. <laughs> cruel and sadistic people. They, all they care about is themselves, narcissism. 
<clears throat> we all do you guys all remember um Jesus Christ's sermon about the farmer where he, one one's preparing the field while the other's watering it but Lord, but God gives the increase yeah yeah I'm just paraphrasing the guys and let's look right here at 11 he that killeth his land shall be satisfied with bread but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding yeah so which one do you think that is guys you think that's the guy that was uh, on the edge of the field or the one that was cast amongst weeds? Or do you think that's the one that was planted in good soil? Oh, the first one. First one, yeah. The one on the on the on the wayside. They will try and they will try and they will try to say they're Christian and nothing in their life is representative of Christ. Not even their understanding of God's word is of Christ. They wither very fast once any kind of fire is put to them. And I love this one next. The wicked desire the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. We, we've heard the statement of uh, the prayer, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The same goes for us Christians that do not compromise the word of God. And we lead others to seek God's will in everything we do. If you ever want a promise or a guarantee, the more we live for God, the more come to God. And they come to God in the full knowledge of God versus half truths. But Satan is going to use the net of half truths to entice them into a false sense of righteousness. We have to be careful on how we share the word of God and that we're sharing it in context and in truth and not what we think it means. Because Satan likes to cast that net of deception. And he uses people to do that very well. I know this is out of character. What's out of context? Come here. No. Uh, Adam and Eve. Yeah. How did it come to where people started calling it apple? Oh, you're talking about the fruit in the Garden of Eden? Yeah. It doesn't say nothing in the Bible. So how, no. How did it that was... That was in the Alexandrian manuscripts, Egyptian manuscripts, and it was, say, rejected by everybody. But they still kept it as a way to entice kids that it was an apple. They gave that as a visual representation. Why did they pick the apple? I don't know. They could have picked the watermelon for all we know. But they chose the apple to be the symbology. A lot of uh, Renaissance artists like Michelangelo, uh, Van Gogh, a lot of them picked the apple as a representation of it. And it became biblical because somebody drew it. Um, and, it yeah, it's, it's just... It it's exactly what we're talking about, the snare. It's not out of context because it's the snare. Like the visual representation. Eve shouldn't have took that apple. You see, it's just easy for you to say it. And then everybody says it, and then it's accepted as fact when it's not. And that's that wicked snare, and that's a good example of the wicked snare. Those half truths. I just didn't understand how they got apple out of the whole process, but it doesn't say nothing about yeah. an apple in, in no. the No, I just called it the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But you guys, sorry about that, but she's right. That's a good example of the snares. And I love it because it's going to tell you the truth. But let's look here at verse 13. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. How many of you guys know the rule, the old statement, loose lips sink ships? Yeah. I don't think I've heard that before. You haven't heard it before? Uh, no, I haven't. I don't I think just, so anyway. 
it's a military statement uh, back during World War II, where the enemy's always listening on where he can where he can get you. And it said it's good for the Bible too, because a gossiping loose lip likes to spread lies. And this is where a lot of people don't catch it. This is why the wicked is snared. Because you catch somebody in a lie, they try to use a lie to cover a lie. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Yeah, where people are, when they get caught on a lie, they add another lie to try to cover up their first lie. And then oh. it just snowballs down. That's exactly what he's saying here. By the tongue, you will be snared in your wickedness. But see, the Christian, instead of lying, they go, this is who I am. This is what the Bible says I am. Like, um, two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah, two wrongs don't make a right. But a, a liar will continue to lie to cover up their first lie. Yeah. So, Satan does the same thing. He'll keep lying till he convinces you that he's who he says he is. <laughs> so will a wicked person. <laughs> like verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. That's exactly what I was just saying. The Christian will be satisfied with what God says he is and what God would have him do. Um, that comes back to integrity. We all know that integrity is doing what is right when no one's watching. Because we know God is always watching. So this is exactly it. And the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Jesus said it best when he said a workman is worthy of his meat. The more hard work you do, the more you're going to return or receive. And that's what he means. The recompense of a man's hand or the repayment. You get what you give. And that's a lot of people don't understand that term. But I like this next one. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth, hearkeneth under counsel is wise. We talked about gap standing. When we see our brother or sister start to err. Even though the person thinks it's the right idea and it's a good idea to go down this path. Yeah, because you didn't pray. I always give the advice before you take a step out into the world or to change your job or to do anything. Don't walk away from what you have right now until you are fully prepared by God and that you know it's from God. Because it may seem right to change jobs completely. Or you just quit a company and you go to work for another company thinking you're going to have it better there or that they truly like you. And once you get there, all you find is misery and bitterness because you didn't yield and let God lead you. How many have been there before? I have. What? Go and jump on a job thinking it will be better and it winds up being worse than the job I had. Mm -hmm. Hey. It's just bitter. It's just horrible. And you are no more, you're worse, you're far worse off miserable than you were with the job you had. I love that one because it's right. <laughs> and if you're not sure that it's a good move, go to your brothers and sisters and ask them to pray with you. I mean, let them tell you their opinion. And don't get mad if their opinion differs from you, but instead, glean from their opinions and listen to them. And listen into their reasoning because, you know what, they might be saving you from the fire. And that's what he's saying. is If you know you've got good Christian brothers and sisters, always go to them and pray with them. And say, hey, can you pray with me on this? I got to make a decision if I want to keep the job I have now or I want to go somewhere else. Or I want to go and minister this family but i want to know that it's right in god and that's the same kind of ideology is always pray before you do something because something you do might not be of god and you might be setting yourself a trap even though it looks good 
But I like the next one. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covers shame. How many of us have got allowed people to get us so mad that we look like the fool? I've done that more times than I can count. Yeah, 100%, Isaac. Me too. Uh, but have you ever noticed the calm person goes, hey, hey, come on. Let's get out of this. Let's get out of this. Come on. Come on. You walk with me. Let's cool down. You've had people that do that, right? Oh, yeah. You had people to pull you away from the situation. Say, hey, 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 come on. Let's go over here. Who, who do you think is righteous in God's eyes? The person acting like a fool and being silly or the prudent man that pulls that person out? Oh, the cool head. Yeah, the cool head. Because he's saving you from falling short, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And I love the next one. He that speaketh truth, she with forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. Sister Marcy, we know about that, right? <laughs> yeah, you're Kalen's soon to be ex. Yeah. You want an answer from God, it's right there. <laughs> a yeah. false witness is deceit. He did that out of spite, and he lied to get that restraining order. Yeah. It, it yeah. makes sense that God's confirming it in his word. And that's what I said, Sister Marcy, this one's for you as a reminder to stay true and stay honest because he's destroying himself. Oh, yeah. there, there is that speaketh there is that speaketh like the piercings of the sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. If you start spewing bitterness and hatred and misery and discord, it's going to sever ties that were once thought unbreakable. It's going to create division. It's going to create hate, malice, and envy. But the tongue of the wise is health. You start speaking wisdom and you start speaking things and you will see bridges that were burnt come back together in a spiritual way. But when there is so much evil around a person and you have to cut that tie and you show others to step away from that, you're snatching them from the fire because you didn't allow them to fall into the same snare. But a lot of people won't understand that. But here we go. The lip of the truth shall be established forever. Just what I just said. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. How long does a lie usually last if somebody tries to commit a lie and try to convince you that they're somebody they're not? As long as it's a lie. You, you start to see their ways, don't you? A lie can only last so long. Then the yeah. facade falls off. Just remember that. Mm. And I like this here. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. It's exactly what we were just talking about. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. They're going to do everything they can to destroy, the, destroy you for God. They're going to do everything they can to create this image that they are somebody they are not. They're going to try to make themselves look good. But that facade is going to fall away and crack because it wasn't set on a good foundation. But when we seek to be peaceful, and to live uprightly. Joy comes in the morning. And I like this because people say, well, this tells you that God lied because it says here. But let's look at context here, guys. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Everyone's going to go, well, does, well, didn't Job suffer evil? Didn't uh, the children of Israel suffer evil? 
<clears throat> they will take this scripture out of context. What he is saying is here, the just do not look to do evil. They don't seek to find evil. They don't seek to live in evil ways. That is a reminder that no matter what comes your way, wickedness, no matter what spiritual wickedness comes your way, God will deliver you from it if you allow him to and you trust him. <laughs> but a lot of people will misunderstand that because the wicked shall be filled with mischief. How many people have seen these wicked people? And it's like, they got to keep scheming new ways to do things. They're always coming up with a new way to cheat someone or to get one up on someone. God doesn't want us to seek ways to be one up. He wants us to be meek and humble where when we're doing our job, do our job silently and joyfully and do it right. No cutting corners, but to live to honor God in every action you make. Doing so, the evil's not going to come upon you. Because do you think God's going to allow one a person to destroy a person that's honoring him? No. No. This is exactly what he meant by that scripture about there shall no evil happen to the just. He's not going to let no one take you out before your time. <clears throat> Just remember, even Jesus was tempted by Satan after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And here we go again. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that true deal truly are his delight. <laughs> we talked about this already, and it's a repeat. But we must look to speak truthfully in all things that we do. <laughs> that we are honoring God. And I love this one because it goes right back to what we just said about this. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Toe in the water, weekend warrior Christians. We've seen them, haven't we? Yeah. Okay. They'll, they will lead you down a path and you can tell that there's no fruit in them. And this is exactly what he's talking about here. But the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. <clears throat> this is where we get a lot of false teachings from. And a lot of them will say, believe it and receive it. You can believe it. If you believe it in your heart, God's going to guarantee it. You know, you've seen these kind. Uh, the prosperity theologists, the ones that, hey, put money in the plate. God will reward you 10 times 10. Yeah. <laughs> that, that sums it up. Because it's foolish to think that's that what's in it me for me. What am I going to get out of this? The more I give <laughs> mentality. But this is what we're facing in churches today is these type of uh, mentalities, these uh, fools proclaiming foolishness, these silly ideas that they think is true in God's word and they're not. A prudent man takes the whole word of God and takes it into his life and applies it to his life. And I like the next one. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that a lazy person is always needing things, always not having enough money, and they're always asking you for more help? They'll come back again and again and again and again, and it never gets better. They become what they call as a vicious cycle. Oh, yeah. 
or these ones that are constantly, hey, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. But yet they won't work for that money. This is exactly what he's talking about here. Those that are diligent, they pay their bills. They have a little extra to give. And they always never seem to be wanting. But the lazy ones always wanting. That's what he's talking about. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. But a good word maketh it glad. When you're, we just talked about that before we started tonight, Isaac, um, about the weight of the world can, can be unbearable. Yeah. And it seems like you're sitting there getting more beat, beat, beat down. And the minute you get in the Bible study and the spirit of God touches your heart, you become to have peace. And I witnessed it so many times. <laughs> Or you have somebody that's just so downtrodden with everything in their life. And the minute they come into church and their whole demeanor changes. This yeah, is the Holy Spirit. where the Bible mm -hmm. changes your outlook. <clears throat> Encouraging words. They do it all the time. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. But the way of the wicked seduces them. How many of these guys have you seen that were doing so good in the Bible and all of a sudden somebody moves into their neighborhood that's full of evil and they start hanging out with them then no longer they're going to church. They're no longer fellowshipping. Now they're acting like the, the neighbor. Have you seen that? That's exactly um, what he's talking about. Where once a strong Christian where you thought there was nothing could take them from God and you start to see them stray off into the world. I haven't seen that personally, no. You haven't seen that before. I have. Uh, myself, personally, I've seen it in my own family. Well, like, I know what happens, but I just... Yeah, you just haven't seen it. Yeah. yeah. But just now that you are aware of it, watch it, because you will start seeing it. Unfortunately, once you know about it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> you yeah. can't unsee the ways of this world. <laughs> I'll give you that advice. Uh, but I like the next one. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. And it goes back to that same thing. Those that prepare for the day by going out and doing something during that day Seem to always be given to the person that never prepared in the first place. That's exactly what he's talking about. <clears throat> and I like this last one because it's a promise. In the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. And I'm actually going to grab a different scripture here. Because it's actually a very powerful comment. Well, let's go over to John 14. That's what I thought. I was just trying to remember where it was. And I like what he says here. Uh, 14 verses 5. We'll start at 5. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I wanted to share that with you because if we go back down there to Proverbs 12, let's go back to Proverbs 12. And we look at this last verse. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof is no death. 
So is Proverbs 12, 28 still relevant today? Yes. Yeah. Because Jesus' very words is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if we come back here. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue this. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, unto him, I have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast thou not known me? Philip, he that has seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Shew us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. A lot of people do not catch that even John 3.16 tells us this same promise that in Christ there is no death. And we're not talking physical, but there's no spiritual death if we live in Christ. And that's where this ties in together. Do we have any questions? Mm -hmm. Said Smokey out there barking. <laughs> Glad Loki didn't hear him. I know Loki would be talking too. They like to talk over the internet. <laughs> That's <laughs> powerful. <laughs> But any time we're doing these moral virtues and their contrary vices, we got to remind ourselves, guys, that when we start to fall on our own understanding and we start seeking our own truths, we will fall short and we will come crashing into a brick wall of stupidity. There, there's no other way to say it, but it's knowing that God's hand is in it. And knowing that God's will is being followed within your heart is far better than a praise or a slap on the back from a fellow person. So my advice as we close tonight is to seek truth, not seek the deceitful ways, not to go after something without prayer. Everything you do should be done in prayer. And if you don't feel comfortable still moving forward, Go to a group of brothers and sisters and seek their knowledge and seek their wisdoms and seek their prayers before you make a move. Because you might find yourself in the Fowler snare. We're going to go ahead and close tonight. On that, that we need to be careful because the enemy is watching us. And the enemy is trying to destroy us at every chance he can. The difference is, is if you yield to the enemy or you yield to God. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for Bible study tonight, Lord. We lift up Sister Marcy right now, Lord. Give her peace right now and give her comfort and give her joy in the enemy's crossing here, Lord. Lord, give her the peace right now. Lord, give Isaac the peace for the battles he's fighting, Lord. Jimmy, the battles he's fighting. Mar Lord, we just lift up all our brothers and sisters, even Sister Amy. Lord, the battles we face are mighty. We just ask that you give us the clarity and the strength of mind to stand on your promise, Lord, and go forth in battle in you, O oh Lord, and depend on you solely. We again ask you all this in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. 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 Guys. Yeah, I want to thank you guys for coming. I'm going to stop the audio recording.